In this video, I'm going to try to give some motivation for why we divide by n minus 1 as opposed to the sample size n in the sample variance formula. There are different levels at which we could have this discussion, and I'm going to pitch this at the level of an introductory statistics course for non-statistics majors. Suppose we draw n independent observations from a population with mean mu and variance sigma squared. This is commonly the case when we are drawing a random sample. Mu and sigma squared are parameters, and their values are typically unknown. We often want to estimate them. The sample mean x bar estimates the population mean mu, and the sample variance s squared estimates the population variance sigma squared. Ideally, we would estimate sigma squared with this quantity, the sum of x minus mu squared divided by the sample size n. This is the average squared distance from the true mean, and it would be the best estimator of sigma squared. But there is a problem. The population mean mu is usually not known, so we cannot use it in this formula. And since we cannot possibly calculate this quantity here, the sum of squared distances from the true mean, if the true mean is unknown, we might try simply replacing the true mean with our best estimate of it, the sample mean x bar. And that sounds reasonable enough, but there is a bit of a problem here. Of all the values we could possibly subtract in this formula, subtracting x bar makes this sum as small as it possibly could be. I'm not going to prove that here, but we could show that mathematically using calculus. Roughly speaking, the sample mean x bar must fall near the center of the observations, whereas mu, the true mean, could be any value. So this sum here is going to be smaller than this sum. And so this quantity tends to underestimate the true value of the population variance sigma squared. To compensate for that, we divide by n minus 1. This makes the sample variance a little bigger than it would be if we divided by n. It turns out that mathematically this properly compensates for the problem, and on average this estimator equals the population variance sigma squared. It's not obvious here why n minus 1 works, why this estimator on average equals the population variance sigma squared. Why don't we divide by n minus 2, or n minus 3, or n minus 0.5? I don't show it here, but in another video I show mathematically that dividing by n minus 1 results in an unbiased estimator of the population variance sigma squared. Another perspective on this is the degrees of freedom. I'm not going to get into a technical discussion of degrees of freedom right now. This is simply a brief introduction in the context of the sample variance. The degrees of freedom is the number of values used in the calculation that are free to vary. To illustrate that, we'll look at two related examples. Suppose we draw three independent observations from a population where mu is equal to 8, and suppose it is known that mu is equal to 8 in this scenario. The first value we draw can be anything. Suppose we get 9 in this case. We can calculate this difference, 9 minus the true mean of 8, and see that the first observation is one unit away from the true mean of 8. The second value can also be anything. Suppose it's 4 in this case. We can calculate this difference again from the true mean. And the third value can also be anything. Let's just leave it as an unknown for now but it could be any value. We drew three independent values from this distribution, and there are three degrees of freedom. These three numbers are free to be any value. You might wonder what I'm getting at here, so let's contrast that with a slightly different scenario. Suppose we have the same situation, but mu is unknown. We draw three independent observations and find that the sample mean x bar is 5, and we use that to estimate mu. Given that information, the first observation could be anything. Suppose it's 9 here. We could calculate the deviation, 9 minus the sample mean of 5, and we can't use mu anymore because we don't know what it is. 
The second observation is also free to be any value. Suppose it's 4 here. Then we could calculate this deviation from the sample mean and find that 4 is 1 unit less than the sample mean. But something different arises now. Once we know the sample mean and we know the first two observations, we know what the third observation must be. If the mean of the three observations is 5 and the first two observations are 9 and 4, then the third must be 2. And we know that this third deviation must be minus 3. The deviations from the sample mean always sum to 0. This third observation isn't free to be any value anymore. We know it must equal 2. And we know that this third deviation must be minus 3. So here we have only 2 degrees of freedom. Once we know the sample mean and any two of these three values, we know what the third value must be. We started with three degrees of freedom when we had three independent observations from the population, but we lost one degree of freedom when we estimated the population mean mu with the sample mean x bar. To calculate the sample variance here, we take the sum of the squared deviations and we divide by the degrees of freedom, 3 minus 1. When estimating the population variance, we typically divide by the degrees of freedom as opposed to the sample size, as this results in a better estimator. And as I said earlier, in another video I show mathematically that dividing by n minus 1 results in an unbiased estimator of the population variance.